Good day everyone. So for today's topic is all about the emergency response to rescue to life saving. Reporters in this morning together with my pair Lovely Joy R. Amahado and yours truly Leia M. Kanansha. Our objectives at the end of this lesson the students are expected to to define the different concept in emergency response management or ERM to understand the different phrase and key elements needed for emergency response management including local level search and rescue and first aid activities. What is emergency? Emergency is such an event, actual or imminent, which endanger or threatens to endanger life, property, or the environment, in which requires significant and coordinate response. Emergency is any unplanned event that can cause death or a significant injury to anyone. It can disrupt, cause physical or environmental damage, and financial threat to business. What is response? Response is a reaction to such a situation or event. Response can from an individual to national level. The response phase of an emergency may commence with search and rescue, but in all cases, the focus will quick turn to fulfilling the basic life-saving and humanitarian needs of the affected population. Effective coordination of disaster assistance is often to crucial, particularly when many organization response and local emergency management agency capacity has been exceeded by the demand by the disaster itself. Emergency response includes any systematic response to an unexpected and or dangerous occurrence. The goal of an emergency response procedure is to mitigate the impact of the event on people and the environment. So we have eight characteristics of emergency disrupted to individuals and communities. So the first one is not part of the day-to-day -day experience. Second, unpredictable in occurrence and effects. Third, requires a response. Fourth, local resources may be inadequate. Fifth, wide range of destructive effects in impacts on the humans, animals, and or plants' life, health, property, and or the environment. Next is complex needs in dealing with them. Next can be of sudden onset. And lastly, overwhelm normal prudent protective measures. Aim of the emergency response management is to reduce mortality rate and damage to property thereby reducing the impacts of disaster and to ensure successful recovery of maximum number of people. So our first goal is always to prevent incidents before they happen. But if they do, we're ready to respond safely and effectively. The importance of timely and coordinated response depending on injuries sustained by the victim, outside temperature, and victim's access to air and water. The vast majority of those affected by a disaster will die within 72 hours after impact. So, here are the activities included in emergency response management. So, first, we have the search and rescue, firefighting, emergency medical assistance including the first aid, mass casualty management, and physiological first aid. Next, we have the transportation of victims, need assessment survey, hospital preparedness, evacuation, provision of food and non-food items, um, temporary shelter, emergency repair of critical facilities, the lastly, security measures, tracing, family unification. Preparedness for effective response. Preparedness measures can take many forms including the construction of shelters, installation of warning devices, creation of backup lifeline services, and including here the power in the water, and also rehearsing the evacuation plans. So, in the preparedness space, emergency managers develop plans of action for when the disaster strikes. So, we have four common preparedness measures including the communication plans with easily understandable terminology and methods. Second, proper maintenance and training of emergency services including mass human resources such as community emergency response teams. Third, Development and exercise of emergency population warning methods combined with emergency shelters and evacuation plans. And lastly, stockpiling inventory and maintain disaster supplies and equipment.
local level search and rescue techniques. Search and rescue functions are broken into two aspects. Search to carefully look for victims in order to find someone missing or lost. Rescue to free a trapped victim casualty from confinement or from under a rubble. So, for the components of search and rescue operation, so they have three components. The first is the rescuer, includes trained personnel and volunteers. So, the second is the tools, depend on their availability and the needs of the situation. Like for example, the storm and earthquake damage may require tools and lifting, whereas floods damage may requires boat and ropes. For the time, may be very limited for some victims. The first 24 hours are a disaster are called the golden hours, where injured or trapped victims has an 80% chance of survival if rescued. So, the principle of the search and rescue, this step are search and locate the victim, gain access to the victim, stabilize the victim, extricate the victim. Step for rescue safety, survey the scene, prevent further injuries by identifying potential environmental or other risk and rescuer or victim. Determine first aid needs, plan your course of action, build the rescue system. So, let's proceed the basic principle of the followed during the search and rescue operation. These principles are how to approach the damaged buildings. Damaged buildings and facilities should only be approached from the least dangerous side. While surveying indoor space in buildings, do not use open fire, kerosene lamps for lighting. When searching for casualties, do not walk or stay near badly damaged and collapse prone buildings. Do not allow many people to gather in one spot. Do not go near collapse prone walls or other constructions. Move very carefully over building ruins only if it is absolutely necessary as they are unstable heaps of fragments. When removing rubble from ruins, do not permit abrupt jerks, shaking, or strong blows at the site. So, the basic rescue evacuation techniques, evacuation and safety rescuing of victim by applying simple manual technique can save the life of the victim. Regular hands on practice and drills will help the rescuer to save lives in a quicker and safer manner. There are many types of rescuing techniques, but we will discuss few important and improvised techniques. So, important rescue technique for one person. So, ito yung ginagawa kadalasan ng mga, ng mga rescuers pag may, ma may makita sila na aksidente or or mga pangyayari na hindi inasahan na dumating sa atin. As you can see the picture, they have the ankle pool, shoulder pool, open person lift, pack strap carry. So the ankle pull, the ankle pull is the fastest method for the moving a victim a short distance over a smooth surface. This is not a preferred method of patient movement. So the shoulder pull, the shoulder pull is preferred to the ankle pull. It is support the head of the victim. The negative it is that it requires the rescuer to bend over at the waist while pulling. So the one person lift this this only works with a child or a very light person. So yung ano lang yung magdaan lang na tao na pwede natin i-apply dito na ano na techniques. So the pack strap carry when injuries when injuries make the rescuers carry and safe this method is better for longer distance that the one person lift. So important rescue technique for the two rescuers. So ito naman yung ginagawa pag dalawa ang na rescuers. Pag may nare-rescue sila na tao. Human crutch to person drag. From the conscious victim, this carry allows the victim to swing their legs using the rescuers as a pair of crutches. For the unconscious victim, it is a quick and easy way to move a victim out of immediate danger. For the 400 seat, 
This technique is scary, conscious, and alert victims' moderate distances. The victim must be able to stand unsupported and hold themselves upright during transport. 200 seat. This technique is to carry a victim longer distance. This technique can support an unconscious victim. For the chair, chair carry, this is a good method for carrying victims up and down stairs or too narrow or uneven areas. Improvised stretcher. This technique requires two poles, pipes strong enough to support the victim's weight and at least two shirts. Basic medical first aid techniques. First aid, the initial immediate assistance or treatment given to someone who is injured or has suddenly fallen ill before the arrival of an ambulance, doctor, and other appropriately qualified person. First aid priorities. Assess the situation quickly and calmly. Protect yourself and casualties from danger. Assess the conditions of all casualties, comfort and reassure the casualties. Deal with any life threatening condition first. Obtain medical aid if necessary. For the search and locate victims, following good practice guidelines will help to prevent the spread of infection. If facilities are available, wash your hands truly with soap and water before and after getting a casualties. If possible, carry protected disposable gloves with you all the times and use them when you are giving first aid. If gloves are not available, ask the casualties to dress with his or her own wound. Or enclose your hands in clean plastic bag or shopping bag. Dispose of all waste safely. Who to approach first? There are three conditions that immediately threaten life. Breathing problems, heart problems, serious bleeding. When there is more than one injured person, go to the quiet one first. They must be unconscious and need attention. For unconscious person, open airway, place one hand and forehand and gently tilt the head back and lift the chin. For the checking breathing, look, listen and feel for the breathing for no more than 10 seconds. Look for chest movement, listen for the sounds and feel for the breath of your cheek. Action at an emergency or DRABCC. So what is DRABCC stands for? D danger. A airway. B breathing. C compression. C circulation. So for the D danger, assess the situation. Are there any danger to yourself or an injured person? If it is there, either remove the danger or take the casualty out of danger. So for the R response, assess the person for per Responsiveness, do they respond to your voice and being gently shaken? For the A, airway, check and open the airway place, one hand on the forehead, tilt the head back and lift the chin. For the B, breathing, cheek breathing, look, listen and feel for breathing. Look for chest movement, listen for sounds and breathing and feel for breath on your cheek. Do this for no more than 10 seconds. If the person is breathing normally, assess for life threatening injuries and then place in the recovery position and maintain an open airway. For the C is compression, if they are not breathing normally, send a health protocol ambulance and start CPR. Cycles of 30 chest compression followed by 2 rescue breaths or only continue chest compression at the rate of 100 compression per minute. For the C is circul circulation, look for blood pumping for pouring out of a wound control it with direct pressure look for normal tissues color how to do the recovery position first place arm nearest you at a right angle with palm facing up next move other arm palm upward against the person cheek then get hold of the knees farthest from you and pull up until the foot is flat on the floor next pull the knee towards you keeping the person's hand pressed against your cheek and position the leg at a right angle what to do if the person is bleeding? First, check whether there is an object embedded in the wound. Second, if there is nothing embedded, press on the wound with your hand, ideally over a clean pad and secure with a bandage. Lastly, raise the wounded part above the level of the heart. Shock. The most common cause of shock is severe blood loss. This is life-threatening condition 
and occurs when vital organs do not get enough oxygen due to reduced blood circulation. Burns and scalds. Cool the burn area as quickly as possible by placing the affected area under cold running water for at least 10 minutes. Next, cover the injury using a clean pad or clean film and seek medical advice. Call for help in severe cases. For strains and sprains, we can apply the RISE method. R stands for rest the injured part. I. Apply ice or a cold compress for first 30 minutes. C. Compress the injury with a compression bandage. And E. Elevate the injured partitionally by the rice. Fractures. A fracture is a break or a crack in a bone. Management. Encourage the casualty to keep still, steady, and support the injured limb.